Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. We are looking at the concept of compositionality. We have studied the concept of compositionality with respect to artha and right now we are studying the compositionality with respect to shabda. In this lecture, we continue to study this concept with respect to specific shabdas, the components of the padas namely the prakritis and pratyayas, the roots and the suffixes. We, so we are studying the compositionality with respect to shabda. So we said that vakya is the basic unit of the speech sound as far as the shabda level is concerned. This vakya can be said to be composed of padas. So, if we take Vakya 1 for example, we can say that it is composed of Pada 1 plus Pada 2 plus Pada 3. Now, the plus signs over here are marked in red ink. The purpose for using red ink over here is to show that it is this combination which is what is exclusively a sentence. Pada 1 is independent, Pada 2 is independent, Pada 3 is independent as a con constituent, but their combination which is shown by these red marks, this is what is the sentence. Pada 1 can occur in another combination, so also can Pada 2, so also can Pada 3 and that combination will be considered as a sentence. This precisely corresponds with the sentence meaning which we said can be exclusively pointed out to these plus marks over there as well. Similarly, the padas which are the constituents of the vakya in their turn can be also shown to possess certain other constituents namely prakriti and pratyaya. So, pada 1 can be said to have prakriti 1 and pratyaya 1 as the constituents. Pada 2 can be said to have Prakriti 2 and Pratyaya 2 as constituents. Pada 3 can be said to have Prakriti 3 and Pratyaya 3 as constituents. Once again, these plus signs between the Prakriti 1 and Pratyaya 1 etc. As are shown with blue marks precisely to highlight the point that it is this mark which exclusively can be called as Pada. Prakriti and Pratyaya are independent components and they can come together in different combinations. But it is this combination which is what is called as Pada. So this is over and above these clearly demarcated components. This is same as the Padartha which is also over and above the meanings of its constituents. The Padartha was also pointed out towards to these plus signs which is over and above the meanings of the Prakriti and the Pratyaya. Correspondingly, even in the case of Pada, the same thing happens. Overall, we can say that Prakriti 1 and Pratyaya 1 is the constituent in a way indirectly of the Vakya. The direct constituent of Vakya is Pada and the direct constituents of Pada is Prakriti and Pratyaya, but Prakriti and Pratyaya therefore can be said to be the components or the constituents of Vakya in general in Sanskrit. So the sentence structure which is made up of these Prakritis and Pratyayas can be shown in the following manner. Sentence 1 is of this kind RP where R stands for root, P stands for Pratipatika, T stands for termination, V stands for Dhatu, OS stands for other suffix. So, the first sentence structure is of this kind, RP plus PT and 1 to 3 plus RP plus PT 4 to 21 plus RV plus OS 
plus V T 1 to 18. 1 A can be shown with the order change where R V plus O S plus V T 1 to 18 they occupy the first position plus R P plus P T 1 to 3 in the second position and R P plus P T 4 to 21 in the third position. And the similar kind of construction can be shown in the following manner R P plus P T 1 to 3 plus R V plus O S that is here plus V T 9 to 18 and if the order is changed then R V plus O S that is here plus V T 9 to 18 plus R P plus P T 1 to 3. This is how the sentence structure that can be shown in the form of the Prakriti and Pratyajit. We shall study the examples of these in detail later on when we look at the concept of sentence as well as Pada later on when we look at the Saudhnya Sutras. Right now let us look at the Prakritis and Pratyayas. There are two types of roots Dhatu and Pratipadika. Dhatu is the verbal root and Pratipadika is the nominal root. Now let us look at dhatu. A dhatu is of two kinds, simple as well as complex. The simple one is listed in the lexicon and it is stated by 1.3.1 bhuva dayo dhatavah. What this means is the verbal elements in the list beginning with bhu and which denote action are termed as dhatu. And the complex ones which are derived rule based are stated by 3132 which is sanadhyanta dhatavah which means the verbal elements at the end of which appear a list of suffixes beginning with san are termed as dhatu. These are the two explanations of the term dhatu simple as well as complex. The simple dhatu has 10 groups bhadi, adadi, juhotyadi, divadi, sunotyadi, tudadi, rudhadi, tanadi, kriyadi and churadi. Bhadi is a list at the beginning of which appears bhu, adadi is a list at the beginning of which appears other, Johotyadi is a list at the beginning of which appears who, Divadi is a list at the beginning of which appears div, Sunotyadi is a list at the beginning of which appears su, Tudadi is the list at the beginning of which appears tud, Rudhadi is a list at the beginning of which appears rudha, Tanadi is a list at the beginning of which appears Tana, Kriyadi is a list at the beginning of which appears Kri and Churadi finally is a list at the beginning of which appears Chura. These are the 10 groups of simple dhatus. The complex dhatus are Sanadhyanta dhatavaha stated by this rule that is suffixes stated from 3.1.5 to 3.1.31. Now these suffixes they are again of two kinds. There are certain suffixes which can be added to simple dhatus and we can form a complex dhatu. And the second types of suffixes are such which can be added to pratipadikas and they can be converted into the dhatus. Let us look at them. The complex dhatu in which suffixes are added to simple dhatus are the following. Niche namely E stated by 3126 which means inspiration. Sun which is actually Sir stated by 3.1.5 which means to desire. Young which is Year stated by 3122 means repetition. Young look stated by 3122 and 2474 once again means repetition. Yak 
stated by 3127 year and I stated by 3128 are some other examples of suffixes which are added to simple dhatus and the complex dhatus are formed. Similarly, complex dhatus are formed by adding suffixes to the pratipadikas, the nominal roots. They are kyach meaning year, kyach which is year added by 318, kamyach which is kamya added by 319, kyang which is year added by 3111, kyash which is year once again added by 3113. Ring which is E added by 3120 and niche which is E is added by 3121 in various senses. These are the suffixes which are added to pratipadikas and then the output form is a dhatu. If we look at the pratipadika, once again we can have two types of pratipadikas. One is a simple pratipadika which is provided to us by a list or a lexicon and a complex pratipadika derived or a rule based pratipadika. The simple pratipadika is defined by the sutra A1245 Arthava Dadhatura Pratyaya Pratipadikam and the complex is defined by 1246 Krutta Dhita Samasascha. The complex pratipadikas can be formed by adding the suffixes to dhatus. For example, 3191 to 3476. In this section of the Ashtadhyayi, there are suffixes which are added to verbal roots which make the pratipadika. These suffixes are termed here as k. These suffixes are shown here by the notation k. Similarly, suffixes are added to simple or other complex pratipadikas which are called the dhita suffixes which are shown by the notation ta. Then there are also compounds, samasas shown here by the notation c and finally indeclinables shown here by the notation i or avyaya. These are all complex pratipadikas. So now, Using this more information, we can rewrite the sentence structure shown earlier and that could be of this kind, root pratipadika which is formed by adding a krit suffix after a verbal root rv plus k plus pt 1 to 3 plus rp which is formed by adding a taddita suffix to a pratipadika that is rp plus ta plus pt 4 to 21 plus rv 1 to 2000 plus os plus vt 1 to 18. Similar structure can be shown by changing the order rv 1 to 2000 plus os plus vt 1 to 18 plus rp which is composed of the verbal root plus the krit suffix. So, rv plus k plus pt 1 to 3 plus rp which is composed of a pratipadika and a taddhita suffix. So, rp plus ta plus pt 4 to 21 and the second structure can be rewritten as rp plus pt 1 to 3 plus rv plus os plus vt 9 to 18. The order change will impact the same structure as rv plus os plus vt 9 to 18 plus rp plus pt 1 to 3. This is how the sentence structure can be rewritten. We should note some features of the derivation process as well. In the derivation process, the root meaning occupies the initial position. In the entire sentence, the only verbal root occupies the initial position. Then are added suffixes to these roots, verbal first and then the nominal ones. 
then some other suffixes intermediary which get added, then augments get added, then the process of substitution comes into being and then the output is returned. The word order can be expressed in this manner. If we have a meaning Ram goes to a village, it can be expressed by Gramam Gachati Ramaha or Ramo Gramam Gachati or Gachati Gramam Ramaha or Gachati Ramo Gramam. There is not any change in the meaning at all, primarily because the relations of the left hand side root elements with the other root elements are determined by the right hand side elements also known as pratyayas or suffixes which remain same in all the four cases. And that is the reason why the change of order does not bring about the change in the meaning. To summarize, like the sentence meaning, the sentence is also compositional. From the sentence meaning, word meanings are extracted. Correspondingly, from the sentence, the words are extracted. From the word meanings, root and suffix meanings are extracted. Correspondingly, from the words, the roots and suffixes are extracted. The size and shape of these atoms is fixed by the grammarians after a lot of work. And it, namely the markers are used to assign several functions related to these prakritis and pratyayas. A sentence with the word orders say ABC or BCA or CBA is still considered as a valid sentence in Sanskrit. It conveys the same meaning namely XYZ. In case of accent however, the order would be relevant as the verb appearing at the sentence initial position would have a different accent than when it appears in other positions. Now we shall study the compositionality with respect to accent in the next lecture. But before we finish, let us follow the tradition we have been following of reciting the Mangala Charana at the beginning of the celebrated texts. Here it is Vayakarana Siddhanta Manjusha whose Mangala Charana is Nagesha Bhatta Vidusha Natva Sambam Shivam Laguhu Vayakarana Siddhanta Manjushaisha Virachyate and I repeat Nagesha Bhatta Vidusha Natva Sambam Shivam Laguhu Vayakarana Siddhanta Manjushaisha Virachyate and we end with reciting the five sutras of today. These are taken from the fourth sub chapter of the fifth chapter, fourth pada of the fifth adhyaya. They are pada shatasya sankhyadair vipsayam bundlopascha, dandav vyavasarga yoscha, sthuladibhya prakara vachane kan, anatyanta gata uktat na sami vachane. I repeat, Padashatasya Sankhyadeir Vipsayam Bunlopascha Dandav Vyavasarga Yoscha Sthula Dibhya Prakara Vachane Kan Anatyanta Gata Uktat Na Sami Vachane Thank you for your attention.